Oh hi, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. Welcome back to my channel and today I am going to bring you my um, third reading of my new book which is entitled Where To Next Laura Nickel? The prologue and chapter one. I will leave just um, links to that in the description box down below. So, you know, watch that first before you get into this part because otherwise it won't make sense. Let's get into it. Chapter two. I stomp up the sludgy woods in my wellies bundled up in a brown leather jacket I'd gotten from H&M and a big black scarf. I've curled my hair and made a big effort with my makeup. I am, as they say, feeling myself. I find a good spot in between the trees where the sunlight is slicing through and I take more selfies than I care to admit, shamelessly. I'll post one later on Instagram with a great uplifting quote like, rock bottom is the solid foundation on which you rebuild your life. There's a message from Martin and when I read it, it surprises me. He wants to come over. I agree, making us both promise that it's going to be a good night. No more arguing. When Martin gets to my flat, we order takeaway kebabs and watch a Christmas movie. The night is all right. We manage to get through a whole evening together without fighting. Hurrah! How sad is it to feel the need to celebrate that? Are you feeling better about us? I timidly ask him before we go to sleep that night. Yeah, we should do something together tomorrow, he says in a toneless voice. Once again, I'm surprised. It doesn't sound like he's all that interested in seeing me, but I nod in agreement anyway. The next morning, I'm busy brushing mascara onto my eyelashes, getting ready for a shift at the pub, when Martin walks into the room, fully dressed and shoes on. The way that I have to walk to the pub is right on his route home, but he tells me that he's going now while I'm still busy getting ready. I blink in surprise. I hurt that he can't even wait 10 minutes for me to finish getting ready so that we can walk together like a normal couple would. I don't say anything though. I watch him leave, my disappointment palpable. It's like our relationship is literally disappearing right before my eyes. It's become so bland and mundane. There's no spark to it anymore. I sigh as I hear my front door close on his way out. I feel like I'm done, like I need to make a plan before the inevitable breakup. Somehow, I can just feel it coming. I'm in denial about it, but deep down, I just know. After an absolutely miserable shift in the pub, where I felt like I was barely holding it together, I scroll through flat rentals and Yugi. I'd love to live by the ocean again. When we break up, I'll go there. I smile slightly at the thought, though realistically, I know that it's the worst time in the world to be moving towns, looking for new jobs and getting a new flat, especially considering I have absolutely no money to put towards a deposit. I stop searching, knowing that there's no point right now. I look around my flat. It's a Friday night. Martin texted me to say that he's staying over with his folks. I don't want to be alone on a Friday night. I messaged my friend Adrian and asked if he wants to come over for some drinks. He's a new friend. We also met at the pub. He's lent me a bicycle to get around with. I don't know him very well, but he seems like a nice guy. He tells me that he's with a friend of his who I haven't met before. I don't care. I just want company. I invite them both around. We have a couple of drinks, order a very naughty McDonald's, and eventually Adrian's friend says he needs to go home to his wife and kids. Adrian stays, and we open up another bottle of 19 Crimes wine. We're deep in chat, when we both hear the stomping of footsteps on my staircase. I know I'd lock the front door. It could only be Martin. I swallow hard, and tell Adrian that Martin is on his way up. His eyes go huge. It's fine, I say reassuringly. But is it? I gave Martin a spare key, but to just show up unannounced isn't right. He cancelled our plans earlier that day. Hi, Martin says, looking between us as he gets into my lounge. I can tell by the glazed eyes and how he's swaying that he's drunk. Hi, I reply, deadpan. Adrian shakes his hand and smiles awkwardly. Want a drink? I ask Martin, not really sure what else to say. No thanks, he shrugs. I look at Adrian's empty wine glass. Do you want another drink? I ask him. Um, yeah, sure, he stammers. Actually, mate, do you mind giving us some space? Martin cuts in. I almost drop my jaw to the floor. How selfish can he be? This is my flat. He can't keep my friends out of it. But he does. Adrian hugs me goodbye and leaves with his proverbial tail between his legs. I don't like how Martin thinks he can do that. We talk it through and he slurs and starts to cry. Again. I'm going to try harder, he says. It's nice that he's realising that he's not putting effort into us. But I just don't know anymore. I don't know if my heart's in it fully anymore. It's too much drama. How grumpy he is all the time. Kicking my friend out the flat. It's too much. I love him to pieces, but at the same time, I feel so deflated and broken. I don't see us getting married and having babies anymore. 
I don't feel like he wants to be with me, and I don't want to waste either of our time. On Sunday morning, Martin goes shooting. It's our three months together, but not a word is said about it because it's not an anniversary. I decide I'm going to bake a lemon drizzle cake for us. I'm feeling good. I can see a difference in him. His attitude has changed. He's nicer, more affectionate. I can tell that he's really trying after our chat, and I'm grateful for that, though I do wonder if it's too little too late. A part of me is waiting for him to go back to being grouchy and snappy if we plunge into another lockdown, which is looking more and more likely. Our COVID numbers are rising. It isn't looking good. Let me know what you think. That's number two, chapter two. More to come. I'm quite a couple of chapters into the book now. Had to edit a few things, um, change a few little bits up for uh, reasons I won't go into because they're not worth my time or effort. But yeah, I'm really happy with the direction the story is going and I'm excited to pursue it and continue the story. Hope you all have a good day. Bye.